In this lesson for Bobcat Cam, we're going to take a look at the tool library for the Cam portion of the software. To access this, we're going to right click Cam Defaults and we're going to go down and click on Tool Library. You can see this will open up the Tool Library dialog. Now if you'll notice, the Tool Library covers all tools. Drills, mills, lathe tools, laser tools, plasma, and water jet. So this is going to cover all of your tools for the CAM portion of the software, no matter which module you're using. It's one common tool library. So let's take a look at a few of these and show you how it works. So let's start with the mill. You can see if I expand this out, I have the basic types of tools here. And as I click on each one of these, I have the list on the right of those types of tools. As you go down through. So you're going to pick the type of tool that you want. Then over here you have some information about that. You have tool number, material it is, the diameter of it, the corner radius, the number of flutes, the flute length, the overall length, and the tool label. Now if you want to put the label on the left, like you see how mine are running off the page, maybe that's how you want to see which ones you're using. These kind of work like a standard of, some of you might be coming with the email formats, where you can click at the top, drag things over, and see it on that side of it now. So you can drag these around as you need to, to look at them while you're in here. Now, these are all the names that you will assign the tool. You want to make sure you name your tools, how you're going to use them in your shop, so that way they come out in the setup sheets properly and everybody knows what you're picking from. So you can see here I have some buttons down at the bottom. I have Add Tool, Delete Tool, Modify, and Import from File. So let's start with Add. If I want to add a new tool to the library, I simply hit the Add button, and it will bring up to add a tool to the type of tool that I have chosen on the left, as you can see is End Mill Rough. So inside of here, you're pretty much just going to enter the boxes, enter numbers into the boxes. For instance, the diameter. Let's say this one's going to be a 7 16 As you can also see, remember all these boxes that are asking you for data are calculators. So I can simply type in the fraction and let it do the conversion for me if I don't know the specific decimal. Either way will work. So we're going to say it's a 7 16 end, end mill. Let's say this one has a 1 and a half inch flute length. Uh, maybe this is uh, one I use for a rougher that I've got a 10 thousandths corner radius on, and it's a four flute tool. The overall length of this we'll say is five inches, and it's a uh, protrusion length for standard simulation, the distance it would hang out of a holder, we'll, be, we'll say is two and a half. The default tool number I want it to come up as, if I turn off automatic tool numbering, when I'm in a feature, is tool one. The name of this tool, and again, this is whatever you want it to be, Carbide end mill 0 0.010 corner radius. So again, name these whatever you want, so that way as you're looking through your, your library or your tool list, you'll be able to see the tools and everybody will understand the same tools and be able to pick from them from there. So if you have special names for your tools in your shop, make sure you put those in your label here. Labels are very important when it comes to different things in the software now. Here's the material. We said carbide. These materials are set in your uh, material library. So when you're, you're setting up your material library for your speeds and feeds, you'll see tool types over on the left and different materials there where you can add different types of tool materials and so forth. Once they're in there, they will become available in this window here. You can also assign the tool holder. So every time this tool is called, the tool holder is assigned to it as well. The tool holder would be this dark gray area here, and this is for simulation purposes only in the software at this time. So you don't have to assign it if you don't want, but if you want it visually there inside the simulation to see if it hits, you can simply assign a tool holder, choose from the list. These can be added and modified as well. And now every time I call this tool, this tool holder will come up as well. Now the feeds and speeds give you a couple options here. You have the ability to run off of the material library speeds and feeds with this checked, or you can uncheck this, type in a specific speed and feed, and then every time I call this tool, that's the speed and feed that will come up into the operation for that tool path, and then you can modify it from there if needed. So once you have everything created, simply press OK, and what it's going to do is it's going to add it down at the bottom of the list. Now if you want to change it by tool size, remember just click on this, different ones, and it will organize them differently for you, as you can see. So now if I scroll up, you can see there's the tool that I just created. So the next thing is, let's look at the modify button. Let's say I just want to make a simple change to this. Maybe this tool no longer has the 
ten thousandths corner radius on it. So I just change it. I'm not adding a new tool. You can see it brings all those settings up. Um, you can change it to whatever you need it to be. And then we'll go look for that tool again. There they are. And there's the tool right there with the modifications made. So let's say I don't have this tool in the shop anymore and I want to delete it out of my library. Just simply choose it first and then hit the delete button. It's going to confirm this is what you want to do because once you hit yes, it's gone, but that tool has been totally removed from my library now. So you can see simple changes to the library are very easy to do. You also have an import from uh, file button. This allows you to go back to older versions of Bobcat and import your tool libraries that you have in those into this one. So I can simply go to my C drive. Um, let's go to Bobcat Cam Data, maybe 25, uh, Milling Technology and Tools, Mill, and you can see it's looking for the M tool file. Uh, whether it's a lathe tool or mill tools, you have to bring these in separately. But you can import these into the software and just by opening it up, import it in. Now over on the left, let's take a look at another option, uh, another group of these, and it's the drills. This has all of your different drills in here. Center drill, reamers, borings, all those are in here as well. Same with the lathe, you have your insert types. You can put all those in here. And you can see if I add one of these, it's the same thing. You can assign a tool holder, assign a tool insert. So if you have drawn your own tools, you can assign that geometry in here as well. Choose your uh, orientation, your type of cutting, whether it's turning on the IDOD or the facing, your orientation direction um, on IDOD. On turning, you can see this is the outside and direction, and this is the inside and direction. And in facing, you can see this will be on the end. Very important there. Type of material, type of insert, all the different settings of it that you can come through here and change as needed. The degree, and so forth. You can give it a tool label again. Again, this is so you know what it is in the shop. Make sure it's set up properly. has all the information of the tool maybe if you need it so you can see what's there. Offset registry I'm going to say is 1. And I'm going to, now the current sign, reverse sign in here, what this is is if you're, if you need to reverse the X on this particular tool. So current sign means it's going to run the normal programming, but maybe this particular tool comes in from the back only. So I need to have that X uh, sign reversed. I could choose this option here. And it will and instead of maybe all my numbers are X uh, positives, the tool post comes in from the front all the time. Now this tool has got to come in from the back so it needs an X minus number. That's what the current sign reverse sign does here. And you can see it's brought into my library. Again, you have the delete, modify buttons the same way. This concludes this lesson.